Good day, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here with you to give an introduction to particle accelerator, focusing on climate change, cyclotron, uh, cyclotron produced radioisotopes in the planet. So we, our outline today, we be talking about and we'll give an introduction to the history of nuclear reaction particle accelerator. We focus more on cyclotron and the component of cyclotron. We talk a bit about the operation, how the cyclotron works. We look at the target materials, what are the requirements, and we look at the cyclotron yield, the activity calculation. Then we we'll go to some tables of some cyclotron produced with the nuclides, and we we'll do a conclusion. Uh, the invention, the first, following the Rutherford model of Atom, uh, he was very inclusive and he was doing a lot of research following the deflection of the alpha particle by the gold leaf. So the discovery of the nucleus of the anatom. He further did some research to look to prove the nucleus further. So he was performing in 1919, Rutherford induced the first nuclear reaction. He was performing an experiment with nitrogen nucleus with an alpha particle from naturally occurring polybium. So he bombarded the nitrogen nucleus with the alpha particle and he discovered that a proton is emitted during the interaction. The interaction as the proton produced as a higher energy. So when we look at the diagram on the left here, we see uh, this alpha particle from polonium, naturally occurring polonium, polonium um, element. Then he bombard this alpha with the nucleus of the nitrogen. A proton was given up and a new element was created, which is the oxygen. So this is the first time we convert one element to the other. And this further, you know, physicists that time or scientists that time are of the opinion that we can we need a, a more energetic particle to prove the nucleus. So following its invention, following its discovery. In 1927, the first person that proposed Woodrow, he proposed for his PhD thesis to use electromagnetic field to accelerate charged particles. But this was turned down by his, by his supervisor. So, but he never relented, he never gave up on his, on his, on his idea. So he further, in 1928, he created the first electric field induced by very, uh, very magnetic field to accelerate the electron to a very high energy. Uh, the first I uh, was from his from his uh, idea, he was the first to create a circular accelerator, which is metatron, for accelerating electron, and the first radio frequency, which is shown below, who consist consisting of ion source, a drift tube, and uh, the the gap in between the between the tube is uh, we have an electric field that's like this. So uh, to focus on what we are talking about, machines that use high frequency of anything voltage to accelerate electron charged particles or ion are called accelerators. And there are different types of accelerators. We have the linear accelerator, we have Van der, Van der Graaff accelerators, we have cyclotron, we have synchrotron, we have datrons. So they are different, but they work on the, on the common principle, which is using electromagnetic field to accelerate a particle to a higher energy. So the cyclotron is the most widely used particle accelerator for production of radio nuclear use in nuclear medicine. Although we have other ones that are not produced by cyclotron, that are produced from a nuclear reactor. But when you talk about the PET, we talk about the post transmission and also some of the spec, this can be produced with the cyclotron. So uh, in 1930, following the, uh, the invention of, of creation of the metatron, uh, Lawrence, he was very inquisitive and uh, with his student, Lavintin, in Berkeley, California, um, University of California, they created the first cyclotron. And this was basically used to study, to prove the nucleus, to accelerate the particle to a very high energy to prove the nucleus. And in that way, they are able to generate different isotopes. So Lavintin demonstrated that cyclotron could accelerate the particle to an energy of 80 kV. And in 1932, Lawrence produced 1.25 mega, mega electron proton inducing a nuclear reaction. So the 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 the, the um, there was an improvement. You know, he started with 80 kV proton, then it went to um, 1.25 mega electron proton, and now we have even cyclotron like an accelerator to like 250 mega electron or even more. So Lawrence won a Nobel Prize for this invention. 
And uh, this is Lawrence and, and his student Lavinka. So introduction, uh, this uh, type of nuclear reaction, when it occurs, the most common nuclear reaction that we use in cyclotron is the proton-neutron reaction, in which the target nucleus capture the proton and promptly release the neutron. This reaction is represented by, the, by this, you know. So the atomic number will increase, but the mass number is the same. But the atomic number is going to increase by one. Uh, deuterium also is used. We normally accelerate deuterium also in cyclotron. And this uh, bombard with the target nucleus, reducing a neutron, and the, the releasing a neutron, this reaction is represented by this. So in this case, the both the mass number and atomic number is changing in deuterium. So this the, these are the reactions that we use in cyclotron to produce isotopes in the nuclear. So what's the cyclotron? A cyclotron is uh is an accelerator. It accelerates charged particles or ions to a very high energy. It consists of a pair of hollow semicircular metal electrodes called the D's. They are called the D's because the, the shape is like a D, like a letter D. And it contains an evacuated chamber. I mean, it has to be placed in the vacuum because you don't want anything that will affect the movement of particles in the cyclotron. The these are precision between poles of light electromagnet. I will even talk more about what is the function of the, this electromagnet, the magnet, and the narrow gap between separating the two D's uh, is uh, we have a narrow gap. You can see this is this, D1, D, this, and now this space between the D's is the gap, the D gaps. And the S, which is the center, I mean the center of the cyclotron, is where we have the ion source and is located rightly at the center of the D's. So when you look at the cyclotron again, looking at the component, we have electromagnetic, uh, apply perpendicular to the to the to the disc. So we have we have uh, in between acceleration gap, we have electric field, alternating current, um, you know, apply between the in the in the gap between the disc. And we have the target material, which is uh, where we have the nuclear reaction. Uh, this shows the particle path in the cyclotron. And we have hollow electrode chambers and in the disc and the charged particle, which is accelerated. So look at the operations of the cyclotron. Ion source is the, which I described before, is at the center of the disc. It produces charged particles. Normally we have hydrogen. Most of, most of the cyclotron, we have hydrogen. Uh, uh, and we have ion source. So what we are going to do is that we are going to get some hydrogen there, create an arc to generate uh, either a positively charged or a negatively charged particles. So uh, the high frequency alternating voltage, once the particle are generated, you know, we have an avalanche of particles. Some of the drift towards the D uh, through the applied voltage because normally, if it's, like, it's positive, it goes to, towards the negative side of the electrode. And the accelerated particle towards this, and as they are generated, I mean, the, the alternating voltage. So inside the disc, the particles are moved in a curve, circular motion under the influence of the applied magnetic field. Based on Lorentz law, you know, when you have like, when you talk about the flaming left hand draw, you have the direction of the, when the direction of the electric field and the direction of the of the of the magnetic field when they are perpendicular, then the term represents the direction of the of motion of the of the particle, which is the direction of the force that is. so so the with the help of the magnetic field will keep the, the particles in the D. So let's look at this. AC voltage frequency is maximum as the particle arrive at the gap so at this point. When the particle gets to this point, this maximum, and you could see this is the first point after after creation of the particles. And when it gets to this place, you know, and this first point, you have it at maximum at the peak. So when it gets to the other side here, yeah, when it gets to the other side, you see, we have it at the trough. So at any time, given time, it gets to the maximum when the particle arrive at the at the at the the, the, the gap between the these it has the maximum value. So the acceleration is achieved by the potential difference between this, this, and, uh, so this is just showing us the graph. 
and the oscillation of the of the particles as they move through the disk. So this is so something we have to know. Each time the particle crosses the disk, all those the D gap and in the gap, they gain energy and speed because of the <clears throat> applied potential. And the frequency of the oscillating voltage must match correctly with the frequency of the particle has been accelerated. So I can have an acceleration. If there is mismatch between the frequency of the particle and the frequency of the voltage, then there is not going to be any acceleration. So the magnetic field also has to be adjusted until the period, first one where frequency of the particle that are oscillating. So it has to synchronize. There should be a synchronize, synchrony between the particle motion getting to the D, getting out of the D. We have to, yeah, it has to be synchronized. So, and also we should know that um, the acceleration is achieved as long as the charge to mass ratio is constant. And for this reason, we cannot accelerate electron with the cyclotron because the magnetic field that is applied across the across the D is what is constant. So if you want to have an acceleration of cyclotron, then we have to have a very magnetic field, which is created for by the synchronous. And, and also the, the applied um, voltage has to be very has to be synchronized. So it's not possible to accelerate an electron with a cyclotron because electron achieve a larger relativistic mass quickly. So a cyclotron energy, the energy particle accelerator is given by this. So the energy is given and is affected by the applied electric field, you understand the magnetic field, uh, the radius of orbit and the Z, which is the atomic number. Of the of the particle divided by the by the mass number, the energy that could be achieved is limited by the d diameter and the magnetic phase strength. So, if you want to have higher energy, then we have to go for uh, a, a, a high magnetic field, and also the, the d diameter has to be has to be big. The energy gained by the particle crossing the d gap depends on the charge, the amplitude of the potential difference. Uh, which can, which can go to the amplitude, I mean, the, the strength of the applied thing, this amplitude, you understand? The higher the amplitude, the more the energy gained by the, by the charged particle. And also the phase relationship between the particle and the electric field, and the path length between the electrodes, you understand? And the gap, the gap between the two, this. Uh, when the particle reach maximum energy, beam are extracted from the cyclotron. In this, you see, if you look at this uh, picture below, uh, we could have a two way of extraction. The first one is to use the depletor, and this deplet it to into, into the beam line or to the target. And the second one is to strip a foil, which remove the, uh, depending on what we are accelerating, but type of particle that we are accelerating. Normally, we accelerate either a positive charge particle or a negative charge particle. When we accelerate a positive charge particle, then we can have an interaction directly with the network. Um, by using the depletor. But when you are accelerating negative uh, charge particle, then we need to remove the electron so I can have a positive charge particle bombarding the target. So this uh, is just showing you that uh, we have a tar target place. You can place the target directly in the beam line, as I have said before, or you can direct the, the particles towards an external target, you understand? So we, we normally have something we call the beam line. In, in, in the in the cyclotron. Beam line is just a, a, a component that is used for drifting and, and focusing the particles towards the target, you understand? So the beam line can uh, some cyclotron, we have multiple beam lines. Like this uh, cyclotron, it has two beam lines. And this one, it has four beam lines. This one, two, three, four. So four beam lines, depending on the type of mode and type of cyclotron. So for the four beam line, like I can run the beam, and I can, I can have four interaction at the same time uh, using a, 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 during a, a beam on time. So uh, just a brief, uh, we talk about how cyclotron operates. I say that it's a simple concept. We have two Ds, we have a gap between them and applied electric field between the, in, in, the, in the gap. And we have a magnetic field that is applied perpendicular to the, to the Ds. This magnetic field is used to keep the particle in in, 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 in its circular path. And the, the, the electric field is to accelerate the particle. And one thing happens, once an acceleration occurs, the radius of the particle is going to increase. 
Yes, because normally the frequency has to be constant. You understand? So if you look at the equation here, uh, the, the B is constant and the frequency has to be constant. So in order to maintain the frequency to be constant, then we have to, we have to, the, 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 the path length increases, but the, the, the frequency remains the same. So after the acceleration has been achieved, then the, the extraction occurs, then we go to the target. The target is could be a solid target, a liquid target, or a gaseous target. On the, on the right, we have the this type of target could be used for gas or liquid. Uh, it normally has a window, you understand? It has uh, uh, the target material inside this, and we have the target body. You understand? So we have a cooling. Why? Because there is a lot of heat generated during interaction, nuclear reaction. So we have to cool the target so, so I don't break the integrity of the target. Uh, we have a water cooling. We have a target vessel. You understand? So it has to be properly cool. And we have an inlet and outlet where we, where the, we supply the, the target material and we take it out to the chemistry module. So, then we have another one, solid target. Solid target is a bit different. Uh, it also also need cooling, and it's normally placed plant at a degree five to seven degree, so the target so has to achieve optimal optimal yield. Uh, we have the target material, uh, and we have the copper backing, and this has to be removed after we process it. The, after after the uh, bombardment, we we uh, beam up, and we have to take it for further processing and extraction. So the choice of target material for the target body and window depends on the particular nuclear production process and is influenced by choice of bombarding particles. And we have the beam energy, also and the beam current and material and solid. So the target material, when you talk about target window, which is very important because if the window integrity is, is compromised, then we don't have any type of reaction. We have leakage. And the result of two things contamination of the cyclotron of the tank, and also it leads to losses of time and, and materials. Uh, the thickness of the target window has to be very small. We don't want to have um, collision, lot of collision, or, or removal of the reduction in the energy of the, of the proton. You understand? So the, the window has to be very thin. I should be pin O free because any any O in the target material compromises the product that we are producing. It should be high mechanical strength because there is going to be a lot of particle bombard going through the window uh, for the interaction. So it has to have a high mechanical strength, good thermal conductivity. I think it must be easy to cool it down because there is going, it's going to generate a lot of heat and heat melting point, high melting point. So it doesn't melt easily. So it has to be have high melting point. So it doesn't melt. From the heat generated by the by the interaction of the particles with the with the window chemical resistance. We don't want any interaction between the window and what and the target material. So when you talk about yes, so after we know about a target material, then we we'll talk about the yield. You understand? So we have cyclotron, the this accelerating the particles, it goes to the <clears throat> through the beam line to the target. We talk about characteristic of the window. And when the particles interact, the nuclear reaction that is going to happen between the particles and the and the target material, then there are something that we have to take control. of. The amount of radionuclide that will be produced will depend on the reaction cross section as a function of energy. So if the energy is reduced, you understand, then the 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 amount of radionuclide produced will be reduced. And the cross sectional area is the area presented by the target material for interaction. The higher the cross-sectional cross-section, then the better the reaction cross-section, the better the yield is going to be. The thickness of the target, the thickness of the target also matters a lot because the thicker the target, the, 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 the interaction, uh, the thickness of the target also matters because the thickness of that, especially when you talk about the solid target, it matters a lot because one, the proton losses and like if it's very thick, then we have less yield because because the 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 energy of the proton decreases with thickness of the of the target material. The particle flows 
the particle force talk about the how many particles is getting to the target material. The more particle you get with high energy getting to the target material, the better the yield of the cyclotron. Like we have more radionuclide produced, more nuclear interaction, and we have better, better activity produced. And the incident particle energy, the particle, the beam energy also matters a lot. So in the dark, in the figure below, in this graph below, we see that uh, the saturation yield is if you look at this curve, when the energy of the of the particle is increased, then we have increase in the number of the yield. So uh, to get to this point that it's concentrated and further increase in the in the energy will give no no advantage. So at this point, this is the optimal particle energy that will produce nitrogen. This interaction between nitrogen, uh, nitrogen uh, interaction, this for I think it's for nitrogen. You understand? Producing oxygen. So saturation, we talk about saturation. So one thing you have to know is that from our radionuclide, uh, from our radioactivity, you know, if there's a radioactive material, it's going to decay. It's going to decay according to the half-life. And most of the activity that we produce in the cyclotron are short half life. So it means that once a resin fly is produced in the cyclotron, the decay starts immediately. So at a point, the rate of decay is very minimal compared to the rate of production. But with time, the rate of decay will be equal to the rate of production. So at the end, we have a saturation. If you look at the graph here, this is talking about the saturation factor for radiation of uh, carbon 13 to produce nitrogen 13. Uh, the production of radiant can is the key after the beam has been turned off. So what happens is this. When the beam was on, the activity starts building up for nitrogen. So it goes up, it goes up, it goes up. And around 20 millicuri is precisely what is saturation. So at this point, at 25 millicuri, then there's already saturation. So there's no point in running beam further because you could see this point is becoming flat. So it means that it will be flat even if you run for 100, 100 minutes. So it's just like a waste of time. So we normally say optimal running time for this is around 45 minutes. So we stop the beam at this point and you see a drop off. A drop off normally occurs because one, the activity are removed from the target, one, two, there's no further production of what? Of, of redeeming clear. So if you look at this equation on the, on, on, the, on the left, this equation is talking about the decay. And so it, this point, this one minus exponential lambda t minus lambda t is the saturation factor. We talks about the decay of the redundant plant when they are produced in the what? In the, in the, in the, in the, in the cyclotron. So if you extend the time, the bombarding time to infinity, then this is going to turn one and the saturation factor will be, will be approximately one. You understand? So you think that no matter what you do, you still get the same activity. And also, and it's not really the best. So we normally determine the optimal running time for a cyclotron and stop the beam as when it gets to the peak, peak, peak time, running time. So if you look at this integral, the, 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 uh, this I here, it means intensity of irradiating particle, that is the, the flux. Uh, the N is number of target atoms that is presented for interaction. We have the N, which is the uh, is is the is the number of nucleates. Understand? N is number is calculated in this form. Number of target atoms is calculated by in this form. So we have the, the, the depending on the weight of the material. Sometimes we may have uh, the the target material might, might have more than one isotope, more than one element. So you have to know the weight. The weight is it five or ninety percent weight. You have to put the weight, and you have to put the um, the. This is the uh, atomic weight number, and the, the the K W is the weight of the target material. K is natural abundance of the target element, and atomic A W is the atomic weight. Sigma is the formation cross section. Which is given in band that is area presented for interaction. Uh, lambda is the decay constant, and t is the duration of radiation. So this uh, I got some this table from the TRS uh, twenty-four cyclotron manual. I is talking to us about the optimal radiation time for different isotopes. For instance, 
when you produce carbon carbon dioxide uh, uh, radionuclide uh, uh, radioactive carbon dioxide we have carbon 11 and this type of reaction we use nitrogen 14 we bombard it with proton it gives an alpha and we produce we get a carbon 11 which we use to further you know, the running time is 40 minutes and this is module process time. So carbon outside is processed, not, we do get carbon, carbon 11 and we label it to get carbon outside. And the activity that we can get for this 1,500 mercury. You see, it's very low activity, that's 1.5 curie. So I have the ammonia. Uh, the radionuclide, radioactive material here is nitrogen 13. Uh, the parent material, the target material is going to be oxygen 16. And we bombarded the proton also, you understand? And we get nitrogen 13, which is for that process uh, to get ammonia. So the morning time for this, optimal running time, when we get to the saturation, of course, around 20 minutes. And the module time is two minutes, and the yield is 90%, you understand? 500 minutes, less than one curie. Uh, we have radioactive water. We use oxygen 15 for produce radioactive water. Again, we use uh, the particle is a proton. And it's bomb we bombard it, we bombard the target material with the proton, which is nitrogen 15. You get oxygen 15, and the the radiation time is six minutes, very quick. And because of course oxygen six, 15 is very shortly. So we have two minutes of module time. Module time is processing time, you know, labeling time, and the yield is more than 90%. FDG, which is the uh, which is very common in PET. We have the radioactive material we use is fluorine 18. Uh, our target material is oxygen 18, which is like, it's like a water. It, it, it comes like oxygen 18, it comes like uh, every water. It's a water, actually. So, uh, which, which produce the, we send the water, oxygen, oxygen 18 water to the, to the, to the target and it bombard, we bombard it with proton. A neutron is given up and we have fluorine 18. And 60 minutes is an average running time for this cyclotron in the TRS24, TR24. And the, the module time is 60 minutes and the yield is like 55. 60 minutes means that if you are literally and processing like 60 minutes, the, the, most of the activity, activity will have come down because normally fluorine 18 is more than 10 minutes. So by the time we start processing in the, in the chemistry module and everything before we did the QC, the uh, the uh, chemical purity, the genetic purity. You know, we we want to check all these all these purity uh, all these all these factors. I mean, the time the activity have gone down. So normally we get like fluorine or six thousand mercury, and uh, and it is two mil of target, and for one point six mil of target we get three thousand mercury. This uh to the uh, for the target material matters you know, the volume of the target, the more the target material the, the better the yield. And the fluorine FDG that we get is less than 50%. I mean for this we get like three curie and for this we get like 1.5 curie after the after the processing. Uh we have the fluorine gas uh fluorine gas also is is to use the same thing the same interaction with the one above and it's 60 minutes running time and the model time is 10 minutes because there's no labeling. We are not going to label it with any, 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 uh, pharmaceuticals. So it, it, it the, but the yield is greater than 5%. So, cyclists from produce radionuclide, what are their characteristics? There are some very important things that we have to know about cyclists from produce radionuclide. The first thing that positive charge is added to the nucleus, which we have seen proton interacting with the nucleus. Then we have a neutron given out, as it means that uh, so therefore the product lie below the line of stability and tend to decay by electron capture or by beta positive emission. So again, you have to notice that the positive charge to the nucleus changes its atomic number. So it means that uh, the when you add a positive charge to the nucleus, it's going to change the atomic number. It's not going to change the mass the mass number. So they are carrier thin. Carrier thin is that they don't contain other impurities. Uh, they will contain for sure, but very minimal. In the impurity in cyclotron produced within is minimal. So it has less impurity. I mean, those things that are not fluorine 18, I understand. 
So anything like that fluorinating, maybe that is very close to fluorinating, then it's what? It's an impurity. A very simple example is when we talk about the elution of generators, the technicium molybdenum technicium generator in the PNC. We have moly night night is a is a carrier. You understand? So when you elute the technicium night night, because the elution is coming from molybdenum night night, then it has some amount, trace amount of moly. So we say those are the carriers, you understand? They have similar characteristics like the technicium, but they are not radioactive and they don't add, they don't add to the to the quality of the diagnosis that we are obtaining in the PNC. So we say those are carrier. And also produce smaller quantity of radioactive material due to smaller activation and cross section for charge particles. And the amount, you know, the, even the amount that is produced is sufficient for us for nuclear medicine practices because we use mercury to, to diagnose to to to, to uh, of treasures for our patients. So it means that yes, we agree that the quantity is low in radioactivity, but these are sufficient for us for nuclear medicine practice. So these are the commonly produced. We have mentioned a lot. And if you look at gallium, gallium 67, these are spec, uh, spec indium, iodine 1, 1, 2, 3, thallium, all these, all these four that are not mentioned before are used for spec imaging, for a uh, single emission, uh, spec imaging or gamma camera. They are using the camera, gamma camera with a single position emission tomography. So, in conclusion, cyclotron is easy to operate and turn. It's a very easy machine. It works. We have to apply an AC between. We have to ensure a vacuum in the cyclotron tank because we need vacuum. It should not be, if there is a leak or atmospheric air leaking to the cyclotron, there will, there will not be any form of acceleration. So it has to be under a vacuum and the acceleration has to occur under a vacuum to prevent frictions when, the, when you are accelerating. And two, we have an electromagnetic uh, magnet apply perpendicular to the what to the bees. And also we have the bees, we have the uh, uh, alternative uh, current applied between the gaps, the, the gap between the, the, the bees and the, the space between the bees for acceleration of the bees. So in principle, it's very simple. We have an hydrogen source which produces the, uh, which is connected to the ion source for production of what? Production of the ions for the particles. And we have, uh, we have at the end, we have a target material which contains the target material for the sun. If you have fluorine 18, we have oxygen, oxygen 18 in the, as, as, as a target material. So and we have a nuclear reaction and it regenerates our reduction. So the component, the, the component of the cyclotron is easy. It's easy to understand. It's easy to tune. For instance, when we are operating, when I was operating in cyclotron, I understand that when I want to have the maximum, the, the beam current has to be, should not be too high. Every time it, the beam current goes so high, I, I'll get, I'll get I, I, my, my, my target will be limited because the energy will be too much and the mechanical strength of the, of the window will, 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 be, will, be, will, be, will, be, will be compromised, you understand? So the beam current has to be optimal. The, the, the flux, you understand? The flux is not, it, it's something that the current the amount of the flux of the of the of the beam also has to be sufficient, and the interaction happens, and that's it. We get the building plate. So the operation, the thin and operation of the cyclotron is easy. It's easy to understand. Although there are a lot of things that we need to learn, operation is reproducible and reliable. So you can always get what you have been uh, day in day out, as long as the machine is performing optimally. Intensity is moderately high, acceleration efficiency is high, and the cost is a bit low. Although for the spec redeeming plates and the isotopes, we are, it's more expensive because of the because of technology is now well developed, you understand? Like for example, if you want to generate technicium like nine, it's possible to generate it from, but it's not cost effective. Depending, but most of the FDG, fluorine, ammonia, oxygen, radioactive water, all these are really easy to, to, to generate. So relativity and limited D diameter is good. So the energy is limited and a few mega electron volts. So we cannot go to giga electron volt with cyclotron because of, you know we are limited. One, the magnetic strength is limited. The, the diameter of D that can, that can create the electrode, the D electrode that can create is limited. 
So we cannot have much, we cannot go to giga mega electron volt with, with cyclotron. So the, I have some questions there that I would love that we go through with, uh, go together with, uh, we go together, go through together. Uh, which of the following particles has accelerate, accelerated, but it can be accelerated by cyclotron, of course, proton, electrons, neutrons, deuterium. So the 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 what you cannot accelerate a neutron because you cannot achieve you cannot increase the, the speed of the neutron in the space. You understand? You need a the, the particle to be charged particle. And you cannot accelerate electron in cyclotron, not because of the because of the charge. Is because of the limit, the, the size of an electron, you understand? And the, the law of relativity, relativity. So it's not possible to accelerate electron and electron in a cyclotron. Cyclotron particle accelerator is limited by, by the applied mag magnetic field. True or false? Yeah. Yes. The, if the, the, if the more the, the, uh, the magnetic field, if you have higher magnetic field strength, then we have higher acceleration. But if the magnetic field is limited, you understand, it's limited by yes, this group. At least three characteristics of good, good target, a good target material, you understand. Uh, we, we have it in the slide, you can go through it and follow. Uh, so thank you. And if you have any question, you can, the floor is open for questioning. Thank you. <laughs>